proposed law on alcohol consumption sale. Well, interesting debate there. Of course, many things do happen. Let me come to the studio where we shall be discussing a government's response to the opposition MPs' boycott concerns and the <coughs> presentation before the floor of parliament yesterday of a statement by the Minister for Internal of Minister of State for Internal Affairs. I have with me in the studio uh, Dr. Daniel Ronald Reza, the head of department, law and jurisprudence, School of Law at Makerere University. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me and good morning to whoever is listening in and watching us. And many thanks for joining us too, lawyer and represent. You're a lawyer for the National Unity Platform, Mr. George Masi. Yes, they're among my clients. They're your clients? Yes. Okay. All right. So you can't speak for the National Unity Platform? They're just your clients. I speak for whatever legal concerns they may have. Oh, you speak yes. for the legal concerns yes. they may have. Okay. <laughs> There's always a thin line, mm -hmm. by the way, mm -hmm. between being a spokesperson and That's somebody true. who agrees with an entity. True. It is always very, very tricky. But many thanks for joining us, uh, gentlemen. The opposition began its boycott last month to protest. At the time, what they said was government's failure to account for supporters who were allegedly being held by the security forces. The leader of opposition in parliament, uh, Honorable Matthias Impuga, highlighted that the speaker was saying no, was not the, the, what the speaker was saying in terms of uh, returning to parliament and the threats uh, to have the MPs uh, booted out was not rooted in Ugandan law. They vowed not to attend plenary, but yesterday they appeared as the minister presented that particular report. We do understand that before the minister made his way to the floor, there had been meetings between the speaker, her deputy, the leader of opposition in parliament, and a string of other officials prior to that. During that meeting, a 311-page document was presented to the leader of opposition, Nathias Mpuga, for Peruso, and it's at that point that he agreed that I think we can come and listen into exactly what the minister was saying. Whether that was an endorsement of that particular statement before it was read on the floor of parliament is up for debate. Let me begin with uh, uh, George Musisi. Mm -hmm. You speak for the entity that is the National Unity Platform on account of the fact that their concerns have been addressed extensively and form the premise of this particular uh, boycott and subsequently the presentation before the floor of the statement by the minister. The minister's statement came through. Mm -hmm. Does your client <laughs> agree with what the minister said? Well, the, the report is not a satisfactory attempt at mm. uh, addressing the concerns. The concerns mainly regarded the uh, missing people, mm. the, uh, the missing 18, as they have come to be famously known. Yeah. The accountability regarding the shootings of November 2020, uh, trial of civilians in court martial, human rights violations, shrinking of the space in mm. where even journalists have been beaten, and so many other things uh, which were reduced eventually to the seven. If you go to the report, the 17-page report, the rest of our next chairs mm. of, of things that we've seen before, including mm. the Human Rights Commission report, the League and Parliamentary, the Human Rights Committee of Parliament report, and so on and so forth, mm. it doesn't address in uh, the context, neither does it go to provide answers to what was required. Let's go to the, mis the, the, the issue of the missing people, which I've been largely involved in as a, virtual, uh, 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 as a lawyer trying to locate. Government says that, first of all, it acknowledges the duty of government. Mm -hmm. That's the duty of government to re account for each and every Ugandan. That's right. Uh, the the, the politicking around saying the numbers, the, you told us this much, told us this much, for me I think it's irrelevant. Mm. Even if it was one missing person, government has a duty to account. But it tends to shift the blame, to shift the duty, on by saying no, the next of kin did not uh, give us particular details. Just like UHRC quoted, saying the next of kin didn't give us any numbers. Now, if I'm kidnapped here today, God forbid, or abducted, how does, is my brother expected to know <laughs> the, 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 the vehicle number, the registration plate of the number which has taken me? I've been in court for over 50 times the last three years, mm. getting habeas corpus application for people who are missing. Even the 12 that Human Rights Commission said that it found, most of them came out as a result of those efforts, applying to court, and then they are released. 
even people where a, a person has been arrested, spouses, sometimes out of fear, fear to come and depone affidavit to say that I was there. Mm. It's, it's, it's human. It's very uh, unwise to imagine that a person who is being arrested uh, or a person who is being abducted, because an arrest and a kidnap and abduction are totally different, will g go out and get the registration plate of the number which is taking their loved ones. When if you know the context in which these people are taken, some in the middle of the night, some amidst bullets, sometimes even the registration plates are covered, sometimes uh, they, are, they, they, they are forged. So to imagine that now you're shifting the duty onto the relatives that didn't provide the numbers. Then the, the, the other concern that they say that, you know, people fear to cooperate with the police, mm. they don't provide. Their fear is well found. Many times police has been complicit. I've told you that a number of times, even over all those 12 people, when they report to police, police refuses to, uh, to, 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 to register the plate. The moment you tell them that my, my husband was taken by a drone and people in civilian clothes carrying all military wear, police will fear to even enter the reference. And all those affidavits we've deponed them in the high court, their public records now. When these people are arrested and detained in ungazetted places for months, they, are, they release, uh, after we go to court, they, uh, they are taken through police. Some, some have been taken through Ginger Road, others, Esa Yuchireka, to sanitize the release by issuing a purported police bond. Now, when police is complicit in, 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 in uh, the, the, the illegal kidnap, how do you expect these people not to uh, have apprehension towards police? So the fear is unfounded. So for me, I think that the report didn't address uh, the main concerns. They talked about compensation for the 56 dead Ugandans who were killed by stray bullets. Uh, one, they, they talk about two people who were convicted for killing the two. But who was the commander of this operation? How comes the commander has not taken responsibility? You're talking about compensation. Compensation should be uh, at, at, uh, by a neutral arbiter to, to, for it to be fair, maybe by court saying that this is fair. But giving people barrier expenses of 10 million and say that we are in the process of compensating. Uh, when they talk about the, the police vehicle, truck, which was flagged for having killed many Ugandans, government says it's still investigating. Mm. Three years later, they're okay. verifying. So I think that the police doesn't address the concerns. Okay. The minister also made a concern, and I'll stay with you very shortly before I can go to Dawn. Uh, the, the minister said that in some cases, mm. uh, those to whom it sought to investigate the missing mm told the investigators specifically that National Unity Platform had directed them not to engage with any person calling themselves an investigator or the Uganda police. For me, that's where it goes into the politicking and not addressing, because the duty of government principally is to investigate and give account. If, if you are saying that National Unity Platform ordered, and I'm saying, uh, of course, it's untrue, because I led... When UHRC released the report, which is an annex to that government response, mm -hmm. it said that 18 people were uncooperative. I led the relatives there the following day, and I gave, we gave them more details. Two months down the road, we've not received the response. I <coughs> took the relatives there mm -hmm. to provide details afresh. So f for, it, the, for them to say that they, they ordered them, w it was in the public view. Media was there. We led relatives there. And these people have legal representation. That just like UHRC made a formal request through writing to the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. How comes government has not, uh, police has not made any formal request of saying that, uh, please provide us with these details. So for me, I think that is uh, rumor mongering, that is gossip, that should not be given space in national parliament. I think, uh, because they seem to paint a picture that maybe these people have never existed. Because they say we went to Nira Records, this person is not there. And for some of them, they say he, he, th we, we have no records, but we saw he entering the country. Uh, on such and such a day coming from Dubai. Uh, all these people, even if you go to the, uh, the lead of opposition, could provide mm. those details. They have homes, they have relatives, okay. they have ever existed. So government's principal duty is investigate. All right, we shall be finding out what's the next uh, <coughs> move in light of uh, the presentation of this particular report, whether it is satisfactory or not, what are the MPs going to do now. But allow me to go to uh, Dr. Daniel Rueza. When you hear the gymnastics of uh, investigations and who has the right to which information and whether as a citizen you're supposed to avail yourself uh, conveniently to the investigators or the police for that matter so that they can be better at what they do in, in terms of investigating any rights abuses, just give us perspective on the what I can conveniently describe as confusion right now. 
when it comes to investigations, the state has the mandate, it has the tools, it must be seen to have the will. Sometimes it never shows the will to investigate, and that is one of the claims that mm -hmm. the National Unity Platform has put forth. Who should we put on the spot at this particular moment in time? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I think we no longer have to question who to put on the spot. <laughs> um, because, um, you know, okay. uh, and this is the reason why I came with uh, a copy the of Constitution, the Constitution. Yeah. Um, because um, this is normally what guides us mm. in most of these uh, conversations. Um, national objectives and directive principles of state policy, yeah. um, which, which give the state um, the responsibility, mm -hmm. um, including the responsibility to protect its citizens. Mm -hmm. And what is helpful today is that the minister has come out mm -hmm. and acknowledged the fact that the state has the responsibility to do so, mm -hmm. all right? So I, I think th that, that now is a good step forward for us mm -hmm. uh, and for those who are concerned about what is going on. Now, now that that is done, now that the minister has uh, acknowledged that um, and even released a report mm -hmm. uh, from where the state, from the state's position, and now we are waiting for a response from uh, the leader of opposition, Matthias Mpoga, I think for me, what then is critical is for leadership. Mm. I am very happy that um, the leader of opposition, uh, the speaker, deputy speaker, and other key, fa key, key, key power brokers okay. had a meeting. Mm. And I think that is the way it's supposed to be. That's the way it should have been even at that point before all this pull and push That's happened. Right. Yeah. Now that the meeting happened, this is a space now for leadership, mm. all right? Because whether we want it or not, both the leader of opposition, the speaker in parliament, the leader of government business have a responsibility to help and to serve the people of Uganda, mm. right? So we should be seeing from today now, even as the leader of, of opposition prepares his paper, as ad, his response ad, as advised by his legal yes, counsel right. and mm. others, that we begin to see a move mm. towards resolution of these key issues. Now, that resolution, in my view, should go beyond simply the legal, mm. right? Because the legal tends to be so black and white mm. and may not capture. Because if you're talking about, for example, uh, NIRA records, national ID, yeah. uh, the questions of evidence and on who the burden is, yeah. it will be very difficult for a person who comes to report to the police saying that they have a missing person to be put to task to provide further and better particulars yeah. of the details of the arrest, who arrested them, what vehicle it was, that is going to be really difficult. Mm -hmm. In fact, the reverse should be true, um, as, as, as you have said, Mr. Mm -hmm. Musisi, that the state then takes on the burden, you know, mm -hmm. of, and, and I think the president ha of Uganda has, has seen that lacuna, mm -hmm. and, and that is why he's talking about you know, uh, cameras, mm. uh, and that's why you see he's, he's suggesting things such as having those uh, um, number plates and so on, because the question of identification is so critical uh, in these issues. So we must move beyond the legal in order to have uh, a resolution, first of all, of the cause. Mm. The cause mm -hmm. of why we are where we are, mm -hmm. and then how do we move forward? Mm -hmm. um, because in my view, even the compensation is not sufficient. Mm -hmm. It's a good step forward. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should stop it, but I think we should now go beyond to create a, a, a situation whereby there is some kind of um, reconciliation between the parties mm. because we remain all Ugandans That's right. and we must be in position to say yes this went wrong we took our responsibility for it we've taken action out of our responsibility yeah. the, what caused it should be what we put in most of these uh, 
uh, post-transitional justice communities never again. Mm. So the conversation regarding never again should be what, in my view, is focused on after this, uh, these preliminary conversations, mm. the debates in parliament. I hope that our leaders will take us to a space of how do we avoid this in future. Because okay. in yeah. a multi-party dispensation, mm. you'll always find differences of opinion. How do we express those differences yeah. of opinion yeah. without necessarily uh, antagonizing. antagonizing one another's right to express each other? Uh, talking about opinions. how we got here, mm. the scenes at uh, that particular plenary when uh, the MP for Mitiana, uh, Francis Zake, uh, put to task the speaker to occasion the lead of government business to explain these things had it been done at that point in time whether the explanation at that time would have been uh, substantial or haphazard we wouldn't have gone into the boycott itself mm -hmm. we shall be coming to that very shortly but we understand there were behind the scenes meetings of course the official meetings and then there are other meetings that do happen. I was hosting the minister for ICT a while back, that's just about two weeks ago, and he was very uh, corny about the fact that the opposition apparently had found itself on the wall and that they were seeking a comeback strategy because they knew the fact that the boycott had gone for long, they weren't in parliament, and the speaker was pushing hard to get them uh, to return and to make them look the bad people, they sought a return strategy and that it didn't matter how good the report that would be given by the government is, they needed government to come out and deliver some kind of report. What's your comment on that? Uh, I think it's irrelevant for two things. One, mm. uh, we've, the opposition, this is not the first time they're demanding those issues. Mm -hmm. Actually, but this meeting started last year. Okay. Spretended over by the deputy speaker, where uh, he had a meeting with the head of opposition, mm. minister of security, minister of internal affairs. The meetings, the back and forth engagement started as early as last year. Mm. If someone is saying uh, uh, the right thing, it doesn't matter the intentions. <laughs> we, we, we cannot judge the intentions of politicians or of human beings. Mm. If a politician is, 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 is giving you condolence fees, in, uh, he may be doing it for political reasons because he wants to vote, mm. but the condolence fees will help me bury my loved one. The reality so, of the so for me, I think the intentions, which we can't ascertain, none of us can ascertain, are irrelevant. The issue is what is the cause. Mm. And then you look at your, the, the duty of parliament. That's why uh, some of us were aggrieved by the way the speaker was glossing over these matters. Mm. Uh, and uh, other MPs, because you know, when the opposition stepped out, we had the government chief whip saying these issues have been answered satisfactorily before. And I was asking where? Where has that report been? Mm. Where they, uh, have they been answered? Other MPs are saying, no, you be even block them from the canteen. Others say, so what is the duty of the member of parliament? The, among the three functions given the constitution, one of them is to protect the constitution. Even if they were saying there's one missing Ugandan, mm. parliament should just, just move over like life is like business as usual. Mm. Because every Ugandan should be subjected to due process. So for me, I think that it is relevant if you're saying that they, they are seeking a comeback strategy, mm. they are doing this. Even government may be bringing... It is a claim that has been peddled by this government. And I think it's relevant. And I think it's diversionary mm. because it seeks... To, 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 to cover up the issues being asked. If someone is asking the right thing, mm. no matter the intentions they're doing it, you address it because like we all agree, like the government response agrees, it's the duty of government to account for every Ugandan. Mm. And fortunately, uh, government is saying the right things regarding the law. It says the people should be held in gazetted places, people should not be tortured. That's their response. So if there is anyone saying that there are state actors doing this, it would be the duty of the Minister of State to, uh, of Internal Affairs to say, give me those people such that I punish them, mm -hmm. if government was being uh, truthful mm -hmm. in resolving the issues. Uh, doctor, do you see government actually going ahead in light of the statement that has been issued by the Minister to prosecute those that need to be prosecuted or charged with offenses regarding mm -hmm. to what the could have done, could or, have. you know, apparently accused of. Do you see this happening in the days to come? 
Well, once again, mm. <laughs> the constitution, constitution, you know, yeah. um, the constitution gives powers to the office of the director of public prosecutions. Mm. Uh, the director of public prosecutions is an independent office, That's right. um, which uh, upon being given, upon a file being opened, mm. um, should be able to look at the evidence uh, require more evidence if need be and prosecute. Mm. Uh, this should not even be a duty that you should put on the state per se, mm. but on the, um, the, the, well, the state organs, that is the police, uh, but now you know the office of the DPP has also now uh, innovated. Mm. They are what we call uh, prosecution-led investigations. Mm. Um, and, 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 and this is still possible uh, to happen. Um, so, Hopefully, there is evidence mm. um, that fits the criterion mm. that is required by the law. Okay. But uh, I must I must hasten to add that mm. sometimes that evidence is very difficult to come by. Mm. So we need to manage the expectations of Ugandans mm. that if you are going to prove certain offenses, there are certain ingredients that you must be able to prove. There must be a way to pick that evidence. Mm. And so I think the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions uh, should, should, should manage expectations of Ugandans. Mm. But also, therefore, um, Ugandans who are interested in these matters should come up, mm. provide the evidence that they have, you know, to the different actors. And I think this is where uh, mm. Mr. Musisi also I is trying to come in mm. to, to say that, yes, whereas this is the position being presented by the minister, we have been able mm. to bring witnesses. We've been able to do X, Y, and Z. So I okay. think where there is uh, some form of evidence enough to hold the charge, um, uh, that the state through the office of the directorate uh, of public prosecutions should be able to do that but you you if you don't if you don't <laughs> mind let me just say something about uh, the do. question regarding uh, uh, the, the the fact that the opposition were, were put on the back pedal uh -huh. as long as they they achieved the purpose they wanted mm. which was really to get the government to issue a report yeah yeah I, I think it is important that we concentrate on that process mm. instead of the back and forth mm. why because like i said we must be aiming at how do we ensure mm. that we don't do it again why why am i insisting on this because as you can see from the constitutional history of uganda today's government can become tomorrow's opposition that's right. You get it. There was a time when the UPC, go UPC was in government. Mm. Today, UPC is in what? Opposition. Opposition. So you would want to create a situation whereby the office and the offices of in a multi-party dispensation of both opposition and the party and leadership are respected as provided for in the constitution yeah. because at the end of the day they are actually checking on each other yeah. and supporting each other albeit in a very <laughs> uh, antagonistic form, form. but you All do right. not want to create a mm. culture that makes it impossible for oh. Any resolutions? Any to resolutions to be reached, mm. and for the country as it, as Uganda to move forward together. Okay. Yes. Uh, talking about establishing uh, cultures, uh, the Speaker of Parliament, Right Honourable Anita Among, was uh, standing on the precipice of creating a new culture where she can tell members of Parliament not to undertake a process that is provided for within the Constitution on account of uh, what she thinks of I want to appeal to at that particular moment in time. We don't, I don't want to continue the discussion about this statement because I expect the leader of opposition, uh, Mpuga Mathias, to uh, respond to. And uh, that would either take us into extra time on this particular <laughs> issue, <laughs> or it could effectively end at 90 minutes. Mm. I hope it ends at 90 minutes mm. uh, by the uh, leader of opposition either acknowledging that, yes, there has been uh, an attempt to rectify these matters and that we shall give the government the benefit of the doubt. Now, let me get to the dynamics of uh, political power and the 
leverage that any one person can want to use at any one time. The Speaker of Parliament said that if 15 sittings elapse and uh, the members of opposition are not in the House, then the law was going to take root. And somebody or elements said, no, that's not how it is. We are undertaking a legitimate protest. Mm -hmm. We indicated at the beginning that this is what we are going to do. So there is absolutely no premise upon which we shall be threatened. And there are those now who are saying that it's exactly this kind of uh, dilemma that has created the fact that we, they had to agree and the minister come and speak in order for everyone to save face. First and foremost, what is the constitutional mandate of the speaker when it comes to MPs who have not appeared in plenary for the sittings that they are required to sit? Is that for that me? That question, uh, go first, because right. I believe you've taught lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> like myself. <Yeah. laughs> well, um, simply this, that mm. there are rules of procedure. That's right. Um, and, and indeed that, that um, there must be a situation whereby if a member of parliament is absent mm. without explanation, without mm. leave, mm. you know, and has just more or less abandoned duty, mm. then there must be a process that is triggered, right? right? But I think in this case, it does not uh, apply. Mm. Uh, because legally, you have members of parliament mm. who have a mandate to represent the their people, people yeah. all right and in representing their people does not mean that they lose their rights under the constitution article 28 and other article mm. 23 rights to assemble rights to associate right to demonstrate uh right even of of um, the, the kind of boycott mm. that they were B because this is legitimate this was legitimate action yeah. allowed by the constitution to be able to push the state to respond mm. right and and that is what they achieved mm. now as soon as that was achieved mm. uh, there was no more room for mm. them to keep away because once they were informed that the, the the statement is ready here is a copy of what I'm going to read as a minister then the leader of opposition no longer had cause to keep away and so he brought his team back uh, to to listen uh, to the meter and the plenary would go ahead okay. I think I think um, we, we need to remember mm. that the Speaker of the House is a Speaker of all members, members of, of Parliament. Of parliament. Right. I remember when I was head prefect in Busoga College, Miri, and I made a mistake. Mm. And one of my prefects came to me and said, Mr. HP, your port is your port even if it is black. Your prefects <laughs> are your prefects, wow. mm. even if they've made the a mistake. Right. Even if the members of opposition have, have done something that is not the way you want it to be, mm. your duty as speaker is to engage. Mm. You know, because parliament by its nature in a multi-party dispensation is a collection of divergent views mm. and divergent ways of doing things. So call the opposition leader. Uh, call the leader of government business like they have finally done mm. resolve the issue and uh, and 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 you move on okay i yes. want to believe that uh council george masisi you have uh, you are abreast with the workings of uh, parliamentary law mm -hmm. if anything like that can be used mm -hmm. where a particular regulation can be invoked in case a member of parliament has not met the conditions required for their absence from uh, the plenary. Mm -hmm. But I want you to give us context in light of the fact that we know, and the media has covered extensively, mm -hmm. members of parliament who have appeared only once or twice mm -hmm. since the session began. Mm -hmm. We do not know whether they actually informed the speaker that they won't be in the house for as long as they have been, mm -hmm. but it hasn't caused any drama from the speaker mm -hmm. to talk about. The fact that she wanted to invoke that particular aspect of the rules and regulations on the opposition, mm. she now has to be seen to also attempt to invoke that particular section of the laws on those MPs that Ugandans see and mm. the Court of Public Opinion can attest to some members who rarely appear. I don't know whether they actually inform the speaker or not, but just give us a perspective on what um, the law says. Well, of course, uh, I entirely agree, Dr. Daniel. Mm. The, uh, the, the provision, Article 83, yeah. provides that uh, if a member misses 15 sittings, 
without leave. Mm -hmm. That's the first condition. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, even if they are without leave, mm -hmm. they are still subjected to another hearing. The that's speaker right. refers them to the rules for them to explain. Th that's what that uh, possibly the law envisages that I may have gone without leave, but I may have been under a good cause. Mm. <laughs> Maybe I was incapacitated to communicate. That is right. So it could uh, also been abducted. It could have also been abducted. <laughs> so it's not automatic that after 15 sittings, the person loses. Mm. And it has been rarely used. Uh, I think uh, the post 1995 constitution, we've only seen, I think, two MPs mm. lose their positions. Geno Sejusa and the gentleman called Chipoy, mm. who was somewhere in southern <laughs> Africa. Yeah. Uh, and there have also been several absences, noticeable ones, yeah. even not to this parliament alone. I remember the, the previous. previous parliament, uh, Honorable Judith Wabidi must have sat in parliament for like two years, mm. and the rest of the three years she was absent. Mm. Uh, she comes to mind because it was a noted absence, that is right. uh, but the speaker didn't invoke. So it seems even this invoking uh, is used discretionary by mm. the speakers and not across the board. Mm. Like Dr. Ruhweza says, the speaker is supposed to be a neutral arbiter. We recently litigated the case in the Constitutional Court of Honorable Zake, mm. where the lead judge went ahead to give some duties of a speaker, mm. especially in the multi-party dispensation. Yes, you come from a party, but when you act, attain that position, you're supposed to be fair, you're supposed to be balanced in as far as possible, mm. uh, neutral. Now, in this case, and I'm glad the speaker uh, backed her because she was tot totally on a wrong legal trajectory. Mm. These people were not missing. That's These right. people were exercising their constitutional right to demonstrate. It was a demonstration. A peaceful demonstration is allowed. Mm. They went on record in the Hansard. When they were walking out, they didn't go out quietly. Mm. They went on record. They told the chair that we are walking out until government responds. So it was captured. So it was wrong to say that a person who is miss demonstrating is missing. Even under private arrangements, an employer has no right to sack a person who is on a sit-down strike. That, mm. uh, that termination would be unlawful. Mm. So it, wa it was a wrong interpretation of the law by the speaker to say, I'm counting. Mm. Because it's people are not missing for all intents and purposes. It was wrong uh, interpretation for the speaker to say, okay, you deny them access to the committees. Mm. Because the speaker has no right to stop a sitting member of parliament from mm. uh, attaining any privilege mm. uh, due to them. If they are suspended, that's different. Mm. If they are ejected from parliament, that's different. But if a uh, because there's even a debate which has been going on that, if they are demonstrating, why are they only missing plenary? That's if I'm demonstrating, it's not up to you to determine how I demonstrate. <laughs> I can demonstrate by walking, by shouting. <laughs> uh, Dr. VSJ brought hooting, brought uh, uh, suspense. <laughs> so it was really, it, it's up to me, because mm. I'm exercising my right that's to right. determine how I'm demonstrating. So uh, I'm glad that eventually the speaker, uh, uh, and that's why even when she was chairing up, Appointments Committee, mm. the LOP was seated on her side. Mm. Then you have my brother, Honorable Fox, the other side, mm. uh, purporting to eject <laughs> a member from a committee. Mm. Yet, for any person, any MP should know that your first fidelity mm. is to the law, okay. not to the speaker. Mm. All right, gentlemen, I'm afraid time is not our best ally right now. Let me ask of the final question, and this one should go to uh, Dr. First. What has been the cost of this boycott? Because some laws have been passed in the absence of some uh, members of parliament mm. who are boycotting in protest. Uh, perhaps we missed important perspective from them that could have informed some of the clauses within these uh, bills that have been passed. Mm. What is the cost to the country? Well, I guess uh, the cost is that you lose in such situations mm. um, on the information or opinions uh, all the debates that would have been brought from the other side of the house okay. uh, and, and, and then concentrate only on one other side. Mm. But th the reverse side is that um, you, you once again begin to see the value mm. in a multi-party dispensation of opposition members of parliament. Mm. Uh, they have a value that they play they, uh, and they are playing it as a member of parliament okay. and they are, being, they are bringing government to account. Oh. And I think this is what uh, Ugandans want to know. Is there accountability? Is it being seen? And I think the country has benefited in that we have a report from the state. All right. In this uh, regard. Many thanks. The discretion to give uh, customers see a last chance won't <laughs> happen. <laughs> I'm the moderator. And I'll act Speakers are known for abusing <laughs> their powers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's go.